happening guys so today is the day i am back on log cleaning press i'll be cleaning the log for the first time since before world strongest man so i've got my program up here i have a program today so i'm hitting 130 kilo log cleaning press for five reps so we'll see how that goes but also i'm doing some squat safety bar squats with no shoes on and a slightly wider stance to work my hips also, Zercher Jefferson Curls, which sounds pretty fancy, and some split squat isometrics. So come along for the journey. I've just had a little my protein pre-workout. I am buzzing my little titties off. So we'll see you down the gym for a big sweaty one. Right, so for me, I always start with five minutes on the assault bike. Um, that just sets my... <sighs> you know, sometimes you don't feel like training. So sometimes when you come in the gym, Especially in a busier gym if I'm training in a city, big places, I get a little bit anxious going into a gym still. So for me to come on, take five minutes on the bike, just get my mind right and get set up. I can see the lay of the land in the new gyms um, and I can see what I'm wanting to go on to next. So by me doing five minutes, gets me nice and warm, elevates my heart rate, gets my legs moving, starts to get that blood pumping and gets my mind right, gets me set. So I know after five minutes, that's when I get into my movement prep and then get into the strength stuff after that. That's the cardio bit done, only five minutes, but now I'm gonna do abductors. So we're not having a, we don't have an, an abductor machine here. So I'll show you a little way of doing it just with dumbbells. My abductors are really tight and they have been for quite a while. So just need to, start to work them a little bit more in the movement prep so i'll be doing a lot of wider squats today which is going to engage my hips more i'm going to try and engage some abductors as well when i'm doing that so this is what shane's given me so I basically want to sit up against a flat surface and then grab some dumbbells uh, it looked dead easy when shane was doing it so kind of put your legs your feet nice and flat Oh, Jesus, tight. So I'm starting off with 20 kilos. So you're gonna press them down and then pull them up. I just want to make everything go through. That's the, that's the, that's the, goal. the goal of strong man. You know, you look at the the top guys at the moment, you know, like Mitch Hooper. Mitch has a weak event. Tom as well, he's very little weak events. And they're bulletproof in their performance, you know, very rarely injured. Mitch is never injured, hardly ever. Tom's hardly ever injured. So that's because they're very bulletproof and that's, that's what I'm wanting to become. Certainly, as I'm approaching 40, I need to make sure that I'm covering all aspects of training. To give me some extra weight on this one, this is the last set. So this is the heaviest set. Jeez. Oh, 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 big legs for a big long press, that's what we're wanting. So when I was hitting my biggest long press, which was just under 230 kilos, 228 and a half kilos. My legs were probably the strongest they, they, they were ever. Um, squatting around 400 kilos, no problem. So that's what I need to get back. So you want to get big and juicy legs, stick around and we'll show you how. Now, next up, I have three sets of eight reps. So flat shoes or no shoes, I'm doing a slightly wider stance. So go around 170 kilos today, I'm doing the safety bar squat. So um, still recovering, I guess, from the bicep injury. So with a safety bar squat, that takes away all the emphasis on your, on your bicep. When you're doing barbell squat and you're squeezing in, and if you don't have that much flexibility or mobility, it puts quite a lot of pressure on your bicep, or for me it does anyway. Um, but with the safety bar, you'll see when I'm starting it, the safety bar is here, so there's no pressure on the bicep. 
and there's no irritation so that's quite key at the moment and I still get quite a lot of crossover from uh, doing safety bar squats for when I'm doing like log press and getting that explosive power back in my legs. This is the safety part. doesn't look very safe. <laughs> it looks the, the opposite of safe. Um, you know, that's all I'm doing. These, these handles here, I'm just, just holding them and then I'll squat down with it. So, if it was the normal bar, you can see I'd have to get my arms underneath the bar and that puts more strain in the bicep. So if you do have bicep pain, um, and you aren't necessarily training for any powerlifting movements or anything, so if you are doing strong man strength training, I recommend getting a safety bar squat. It really saves your biceps from getting inflamed and sore. my working sets now at 170 so um, I can I definitely feel it more in my hips um, which is the, the kind of point of doing this so um, hopefully I guess with strong hips then it kind of crosses over to the things like moving events you know, like yoke walk, farmers, uh, deadlift as well, for that walkout, really strong hips to kind of bang that walkout through. Even the likes of doing your triple extensions, you, know, you need to have strong hips. So log press, stones, everything around your hips, that needs to be solid. So if you have weak hips, you're gonna maybe be a bit softer in your walkout. Your knee's gonna be a, bit, a little bit softer. So hopefully doing these, I'll have some, but well, I'll have some crossover. I guess that's why I'm doing them, so. Enjoy your stance. Feet pointed out as well. Ah, great reps. First working set done, actually felt really comfortable, so that's a good sign. Um, so got two more, two more sets to do, so I'll probably have a minute rest and get the second set done. Because it's still quite light, so if it's heavier, once it goes heavier, once a week goes heavier, I'll um, increase my, my rest, set, rest time up to maybe three minutes or so um, but well it's still quite light I like to keep it relatively short um, keep the intensity alive I want big juicy legs I want them big quads <laughs> so want to kind of almost like pre-fatigue the legs a wee bit so when I'm going into log press I guess my legs are fatigued so it kind of mimics the competition as well so a lot of the time when we when we do log for reps or any pressing events it's usually kind of it could be kind of two three events in so your legs are quite fatigued for that experience you want to kind of pre-fatigue your legs this is when I'm doing squats first then go into log press so I think I've got five sets of three reps, I have to check. Something like that, five sets of three with 130 kilo in the log press. Right. So. <sighs> that squat's done. So now, now we move on to the log press. So probably, set up somewhere here so so the Metcons that I wear I use Metcons or TYRs for moving events 
but these ones have a you can see they've got a, a raised heel and it's really rigid so there's no movement in it um, and when when you're up in your your heels I get more explosive drive with, with my legs as opposed to a flat foot um, so normally again when I squat I use the raised heel um, which again kind of just feels a little bit more secure because the heels are rigid um, and I've got no um, the st stability isn't an issue then when I'm using these sh these shoes for me personally after the the squat at the strongest man on earth at the weekend last weekend there I think a lot of guys will be kind of looking into their squat and how they can optimize it because um, you see how see Mitchell Hooper when he squatted it was just impeccable you know he he utilized the apparatus to his his body the way he squatted um, and you know listening to what Hims, he was saying it's the bar the distance the bar comes down as opposed to the depth of your hips um, so with that being said you can you, you can kind of I don't know use the equipment to your ability the best of your ability and I think that's what a smart smart strong man does and um, you know Mitchell's one of the smartest probably the smartest guys out there in terms of um, of everything I guess so it was really nice to see so I think a lot of us We'll be kind of, I know Tom's got plans to kind of change up his squat, to really concentrate on it. Um, and I think a lot of guys will be doing that. I really enjoy squats, I like squats more than deadlift. Um, I don't know, squats, you, you either do or you don't. Like, you kind of go for it, and you've just got to go for it. And if you don't do it, you're pinned down at the bottom, and you've got to bail out the squat. So there's a little bit more danger, a little bit more of an excitement, I think, with a deadlift. If you can't lift it off the ground, it's not going, but with a squat, you can still go down that negative motion, that mo movement, but it's that pop at the bottom. If you don't get that right, then it's game over, and you're pinned down with 400 plus kilos in your back, which isn't, isn't the nicest of things. This log is the first log I ever used. Um, I bought, we bought it for one of the gyms in Inverness, probably about 12 years ago, I think it is. Um, so it's 80 kilos empty. It's slightly smaller diameter, maybe 10, 11 inches. Um, but this is the one that we use in the gym. We've obviously got the big wooden one um, that Richard Looney made uh, in the warehouse. Richard makes strong one equipment out of wood, which is incredible, really nice. Um, so this was the first log I ever pressed, 180 kilos on. So I got some fond memories um, using it. So the difference with this one, it's a slightly, like I say, a slightly smaller diameter. So some people, I probably one of them, if, if it's a smaller diameter, it's a little bit easier to press because if, the, if you're a bigger diameter log, it's further away from you. With the smaller diameter log, it's a little bit closer into your chest and over your hips. So the anything over your hips, that's where the power point is, that's where the that, that explosive power really comes into play. So if you can imagine from there, that position out to here, you're a little bit further away from your hips. So it's harder to generate as much power. So hopefully this should be nice and easy. Sometimes for me, probably a lot of you guys out there as well when we're training, it maybe takes me a couple of sets to get into that that flow. Um, so yeah, that was feeling really nice, so we'll blast it in our two sets. Uh, 
And next up, I'm doing the Zercher Jefferson Curl. <sighs> so, it's three, three sets of 10 reps. Let me just show you some of the stuff that Shane's been sending. So, so this is my dumbbell, the first set of my dumbbell. So what you want to see is my hand placement here in the middle of the dumbbell should be kind of in the middle of my body. So this is my first set. Not so good, so it's, it's a little bit off. But then the, the second one I did, spoke to Shane, he says, like, try this. As you can see, hand placement is a perfect straight line and you can generate a lot more power because the, that's the midpoint of the weight. You want it to be over the midpoint of your hips. And that push, that pop that you're getting is so much more explosive. And then the next thing is to fix is my elbow is a little bit further back. So I want my elbow and this arm to be in line with the, you can see the pin in here, the pin where the plates go on. So that needs to be the same, it's kind of running parallel to that pin. So I need to take my elbow slightly forward. So that's the next point next week to work on. So that's, that's the beauty of having someone like that is like, he's doing it there. He's doing it and he knows what's best, what the best kind of way of doing things is because he's actually training, he's lifting, he's competing. And for me that is, you know, from experience and I've been with other guys and, and I think that is really important is to have that real time kind of analysis of, of your lifts. Next up is, let's say the Jefferson, that's what I want to check. So this is basically what we're doing here now. So, you can see it's loading the biceps, but in a light kind of way. So I'm only going to be 40 kilos for three sets of 10. Anyway, any ideas who Zerch or Jefferson was? I'm sure he was a nice guy. I enjoy strength and lifting heavy weights, so that felt really quite light. Um, but again, it's about getting that restoration, that blood flow. So there's always a reason why you're doing it. So why is it? Why is it I'm doing this? Is it to have big biceps? To be big and strong, or is it to rehab my bicep? So it's to rehab the bicep and get that blood flow. So it doesn't need to be overly heavy. And that's what I got to keep reminding myself. So. Two sets of this, and then we'll increase it next week again and see how that feels. There we go. And final exercise today is called a split squat isometric. Um, so I'm going to be doing 40 kilos with this and it's more of a hold so 30 seconds on my left leg um, and 30 seconds on my right Any of those kind of, those holds, it's all good just for stabilizing and just getting that deep, horrible work done. You know, it's, it's so horrible. Like getting rid of any of those imbalances. Um, the end of this work at one is tough. Good thought. I like it when it's sore. <sighs> All right, I'll see you later. See you soon. Bye -bye. Oh, that's cool. Just sitting up by himself. That's nice. All right, guys, that's my little session done. So all good. All in all, a good day. So going to wrap it up there. I need to go home and get some food in me. Um, so hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Um, next up, we have Big Tommy's recap on the strongest man on earth. Um, the Shaw Classic, so that's coming up soon, so stay tuned to hear all the positives 
and maybe some of the negatives that happened out there. Um, I'm sure Tom's going to be open and honest about it all, so it'll be quite a good video. I'm excited to hear it myself. So we'll see you for the next one. Thank you for watching, and as always, please smile, please stay safe, and most importantly, please stay spicy.